What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. I'm Isaiah, and I just got some exciting news. I just received an email from Black Sight Studios alerting me and informing me that my starter box of demon ship has shipped, which means I finally got to get off my hiney and get a board together for this game. Now, Black Sight does sell an amazing terrain kit for the game. I just, at the time, was not in a position to get that and the starter and I wanted the rules and the models so that was the route I took and I'm going to do something that I haven't done in a great long while which is actually build a board now many of you maybe not maybe many is an exaggeration for anything that I do here but let's say several of you over the course of history have asked me about this board this is the board that I made for my space station zero campaign it's kind of a more of a kill team size board it's quite large Today we're going to make a smaller version of this board. Now Demon Ship only uses, I think, a, a six by six board. So I found this hunk of scrap. You may have just heard the Warhound. He's being pouty in his window today because it's raining outside and there's no sun puddle for him to sit in in his window. So he's not too happy. But anyways, rude. I think that I can get a six by six square out of this scrap. I don't really want to have to break down a bigger piece, so we're gonna see what we can get out of here. So once we have our block that's actually accurately measured, we want to grid this out. So I'm going to use this whippet stick because it is not only it gives me inches this way, but it also is an inch wide. So we're going to use one of my favorite tools for working with foam, this popsicle stick, because it'll give me a good indentation and it'll collapse some of that under layer of foam, but it won't break through that top layer, which I, with it, with this particular project, I don't want to break through the top layer of the foam. I just want to kind of crush down on the foam underneath. And with all of these tiles, kind of laid in we have the basis of our ship deck so I, we're gonna go a step further here we're gonna put some rivets in these decks so I like to start this process off with a ballpoint pen preferably one that has you know not like a regular crystal bit but one where you can actually click it and we're gonna leave the pin part in we just need that hole right there and all we want to do is just take our pen Kind of press it in. Again, we don't really want to break that top layer here. We just want to get a good depression into it. Now there are, we may do some things where we do break that top layer a little bit, but for now, we're gonna do that right there to all six by six, all 36 of these tiles. Now with all of those holes in there, that's a pretty good start. We're gonna take it a step further. Now, I, the ideal tool for this is a very small flathead screwdriver like you would find in an eyeglasses repair kit or in a small like cell phone electronics tool kit. And I have several of them. However, of course, at the time of trying to record this video for all of you wonderful people, I can find zero of them. So I'm gonna be using the back of my hobby knife. I'm just going to very carefully put a little slit in the middle of each of these circles. Do it the hard way because 
Right now, that's the only way available to us. And with that step done, we're ready to move to some paint. Now here there are some options. If you wanted to go in and add some greeblies, some bits of wire, or grates, or anything of that nature, now would be a good time to go ahead and get those glued down before you start doing anything else. I'm not gonna do that because I'm, the game uses a lot of um, situationally placed terrain. So I'm gonna try to keep it as bare bones as possible to not mess that up and even and i am even even though i did all the cut a new one i'm still a little bit off but it is what it is I, it'll be fine it'll it'll just be fine so now it's time to prime now if you have an airbrush i use it i'm gonna prime mine with my airbrush easy peasy if you do not and you plan on using a rattle can couple of options there first option is to put a layer of gesso of some kind on this before you spray it with the rattle can so that the aerosol in the can the propellant does not just eat the foam the other option is to purchase a foam safe primer which i know that my flgs has recently started carrying i want to say it's a division of army painter or something the dungeon master line but they have a foam safe primer now and you can use that and you can spray it and you can go on about your business i'm gonna go hit this with the airbrush and then we're gonna continue on So once that primer's nice and dry, our getting close to the end here step is a quick dry brush with whatever silver you happen to prefer. I've got Army Painter Gunmetal is my go-to silver for just about everything. Not too bright, not too dark, kind of a mid-tone silver. So we're gonna get this, uh, get this dry brush. Now, once that dry brush layer is good and dry, I like to go in with a few different colors of washes. Always at least two browns, usually a seraphim sepia and then an agrax earth shade. And then I'll pick a third or fourth. I was gonna use some non oil in this one as well and just, just opted against it at the last moment. So I, but I did go with some Beale Tan Green and we just wanna kind of mush those colors around, keep them spotchy and platchy. Platchy? That's not a word splotchy and patchy and we're going to use that to our advantage in the next step now you could just wait on this to dry like a normal person or very carefully use the cool setting on a blow dryer but nope i'm going to fan it like the pharaohs of egypt because i am impatient once this is about halfway dry where it's still a little bit tacky we want to go in and just kind of stemple around this is going to help even out all that splotchy color, blend those in, and give us a nice texture on the end product. So after much fanning and to do, we have this kind of well-colored patinaed metal. Now it is very dull, so my preference here is to go back over it one more time with a quick little dry brushy brush. Now obviously, as with this step with the washes, totally optional. You could have stopped at that first layer of dry brush and said it was done. I've got a couple more optional steps that we're gonna go through, or two more technically. We're gonna do this dry brush, and then we got the, the secret funk. And then we've just brought that a little bit of that sheen, kind of caught a little bit of that metallic on those edges. 
And now we're going to get in to one of my favorite parts and one of the main reasons that I chose that green wash to go in here is because of the paint that I'm going to use to finish this up. We're going to be using the down and dirty rust. This stuff is 100% magic in the bottle. If you're not familiar with this product, there's lots of con there's there's numerous videos out there talking about it. If you want me to talk about it, let me know in the comments and I'll gladly do it because I like to run my mouth. But this stuff is magic. It is a little bit pricey, but it is amazing. However, you do need to make sure that you shake it thoroughly and vigorously. Also, you need to make sure you're wearing proper PPE when you open it because it the fumes on it are very intense and I'm 100% sure not healthy for you. As you can see, once that stuff dries, it just sets up just an absolutely beautifully just crusty patina. It's so good. It's 20, like 20 bucks a bottle, 100% worth it. There are not many ex expensive hobby products that I will advocate for, but by God, this stuff is one of them. Just freaking looking now from here if you wanted to put hazard stripes on or if you wanted to do some blood splatter or anything like that you know feel free it's your board your world your game you do what makes you happy and what does the most good for your immersion fluffs this is where i'm gonna cut it off however and that my friends is gonna do it for this little installment of building a better table I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Hope maybe you got some inspiration or some ideas, or at the very or, or at the very least, I, I'm, I'm I hope that you click another video. Thanks for tuning in. Have an absolutely amazing rest. And of as always, I'd like to say a big, huge, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to our patrons who support us and pledge to us over on Patreon. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today and that's something that you would like to consider doing to help out the channel, go over there, check out the link in the description, check out the Patreon. There's a lot of cool stuff over there, including access to our Discord server, talk to me, hang out with me, talk about our work, what we got going on in the hobby. Um, some shout outs, all kinds of cool stuff. Check it out if that's something that you think you would be into. And regardless of whether or not you do that, I want you to know that I am incredibly grateful that you decided to stop by and spend part of your day with me today, rolling dice and pushing toy soldiers around. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And as always, may the dice be ever in your favor.